Hello and welcome to my favourite watercolours of 2023. In this video I'm going to be sharing 30 colours that I think you should know about. They're beautiful and in some cases quite unusual. It was pretty difficult to narrow it down to 30 so I want you to know that even though these are some of my favourite colours there are so many more that I could have included. You may notice that I have a preference for muted, moody, earthy colours. So if that's your thing too, I hope you find something today that you want to add to your collection. And if it's not your thing, then I hope that by the end of this video, you'll have a newfound appreciation of these types of colours. And perhaps I can persuade you to step over to the dark side occasionally. I won't be swatching any of my Wallace Seymour vintage watercolours today because I'm going to be making a special video about those soon. So without further ado, let's get to the swatching. For my top 30, I decided to choose 15 colours from the big well-known brands of paint and 15 from the smaller handmade watercolour brands. I thought it would be nice to split it between the two because I use a lot of handmade watercolours now as well. So to start we're going to be doing the big brands and the first one is Holbein Artists Grey of Grey. Now this I discovered maybe about a year or so ago and I've used it so much since. It's now become one of those colours that I wouldn't want to be without. I tend to use it because I don't like to paint really bright blue skies in my work. I tend to use it as a blue sky alternative and it makes a lovely misty, cool, muted looking sky. Lazurite from Roman Schmall is another favourite. It's kind of similar to Holbein's Grey of Grey, but slightly more blue and also a lot more granulating. I would use it for the same thing as I use the Grey of Grey. If I want a slightly bluer sky, I would go for the Lazurite. It's one of my most used paints in my main watercolour palette. Schmincke Horadam's Random Grey 2022 is a firm favourite now and has a place in my main palette. It's a limited edition paint and I don't think they're actually making it anymore because it's made from the surplus pigments from the year 2022, hence the name. This is an example of a painting that I used random grey in. I used it for the hills and as you can see it's the most gorgeous granulating colour separating colour and it adds a really interesting element of texture to your paintings. Daniel Smith Blue Appetite is a fairly new favourite for me as well. It's a lovely moody blue that leans towards teal rather than being a very inky blue. And I just love blues like this, I can't get enough of them. I have so many dark moody blues in my palettes. Schmincke Horadam's Glacier Green is another really interesting colour. It's very granulating, it's actually from their super granulation range. I'll show you an example of an artwork that I used the Glacier Green in. The next is a new one for me. This is Issa Rose Payne's Grey. You may remember that I did a Payne's Grey comparison video a few weeks ago and I fell in love with this one. So I've since added it to a palette and I'm going to be happily using it in my work as one of my favourite Payne's Greys. Thank you. 
The next one is another Schmincke Horodam colour, this time it's Shire Grey, and another one from the Super Granulation range. I think that I included Shire Blue in one of my favourites videos either last year or the year before, but I've since come to realise that Shire Grey is actually more me. It feels like it's darker and more subtle than the Shire Blue, although I still like the Shire Blue too. As I said, there are so many favourite paints that it's hard to narrow it down, but this is a really nice grey. If you're looking for a grey that's slightly different and you like granulating colours too. Daniel Smith's Luna Violet is a long time favourite of mine and it's been in several palettes. I find it a really useful colour for night landscapes. I love painting night scenes so this is an essential colour for me. It's violet which is not one of my favourite colours but I do love a darker violet. So a new brand has made it into my favourite watercolours, well new brand to me, it's American Journey and I was initially introduced to these by Crixis, I will put a link to her channel in the description and then one of my lovely patrons on Patreon sent me some American Journey watercolours and you'll see that there are several in my favourites here. I just love these colours and Pat's Coastal Blue is the most gorgeous, pale, blue-green, grey kind of colour, just beautiful. And the next one is Sennelia Greenish Umber, just the most gorgeous, dark, cool-leaning green. I love it, I love it for pine trees and yeah, I just think it's a gorgeous colour. I love a moody green, so this is perfect. We have another American Journey colour, this time Blue Stone. I love the name and I love the colour. I think their colours are just slightly, I don't know, different, unique, interesting. And yeah, this is a gorgeous blue green. American Journey's Coastal Fog is the one that got me onto American Journey colours in general. This is the one Crixis sent me a dot of so that I could try it and I loved it. It's just the perfect neutral to me because it reminds me of Buff Titanium but it's also slightly greener leaning and yeah, just absolutely lovely. It reminds me a little bit of the Prismacolor Premier Ginger Root Pencil. And we have another American Journey, this time it's French Grey. This is just a really lovely, I don't know what to call it, like a pinkish grey I suppose. It feels like a very natural colour and something that I could use for so many things. So I've only just started using these but they've quickly become firm favourites. Daniel Smith Burnt Sienna Light is a nice twist on the classic Burnt Sienna. It's lighter, it's more orange and it's very transparent. I discovered it a few months ago and it had to be in my main palette, it's just beautiful.
Schminke Horadam's Mahogany Brown is one that one of my subscribers on YouTube suggested that I should get. And whoever you are, you were right because I absolutely love it. It quickly made its way into my main palette and it's just a really interesting, granulating, rich reddish brown. We're on to the handmade watercolours now and the first one is Fossil from Arca Creation. Now this kind of reminds me of the Schmingoradam Random Grey but it's more of a reddish brown leaning random grey if that makes any sense whatsoever <laughs> but it's very granulating and again colour separating it has that blue coming through it's just a really lovely textural colour. Putty by Beyond Indigo is a lovely, soft, kind of earthy, dusky pink. I think that's the best way I can describe it. It's just a really lovely, soft, muted colour, and I love that type of colour in my palette. Blue Grey by KW Arts Creations is just a really nice mid grey. I love a blue grey and I tend to have quite a lot of greys. They just suit my work and this is a particularly lovely one. Vivianite Blue by Arcar Creation is gorgeous. It's earthy, if that makes sense. It's an earthy blue, I guess, because it's a mineral pigment, but it's granulating and you can kind of see some black coming through. I just think it's really unique and really lovely. Red Clover Meadow Teal Blue. Now, I think this might be my favourite Red Clover Meadow paint. I was very tempted to include some of their greens because I have like three of their greens and I love them all. But this teal blue was just something else. And I also had a feeling that quite a few of you would like it. So that's why it's included in the top 30. The next one is Deep Deep Light Lapis Lazuli Biocal. I don't know whether you say it like that. Is it Biocal? Maybe Crixis can help me with this one because they are a Latvian watercolour. Again, this is like the Roman Schmall Lazurite. It's very similar, but then just different enough for me to want to include both of them. But I would use it in the same way as I use the Lazurite. I love a very pale greyish blue lapis lazuli. I'm not as keen on the brighter ones. These are my kind of lapis colours. And finally on this row we have Noturno by A. Gallo. These are Italian watercolours and they have a beautiful colour range. The formulation is really nice too and this is a particularly lovely night colour. This is Beyond Indigo's Eucalyptus. This is a new one that I only bought the other week, but I was looking for a really lovely soft green and this is perfect. So it has made its way into my main watercolour palette. You may remember that not long ago I showed you my revised main watercolour palette. Since then I've revised it again. If you'd like to see a more detailed video on it, because I did change quite a few of the colours again, let me know and I'll film another one.
Arcar Creations Vintage Green has been a favourite of mine since I first tried it a couple of years ago. It's a lovely moody grey green and yeah I just can't get enough of these. You can probably tell that by this collection of colours. I tried to limit the number of moody greens I had in this but um, yeah. River by Deep Deep Light is a stunning colour. It's kind of a transparent, tealy blue, but not bright at all, very muted, very granulating, kind of earthy. I really love the Deep Deep Light colours for this fact, the fact that they're just so natural and yeah, they really suit my way of painting. I think they're beautiful paints. The next one is Deep Deep Light's Cedar Teal. This is a really interesting colour and you can actually make it quite dark sometimes. It can be a very, very dark colour, but um, it's very unique again. I don't even know what to compare this one to because I don't think I've ever seen a colour that's quite like it. Again, it's just another one that's perfect for my colour palette. Olive Green Deep from A Gallo is a really stunning colour. It's very, very similar to Daniel Smith's Undersea Green. And is it Roman Schmall's Aquarius Green? Is that kind of similar to? But yeah, definitely reminds me of Undersea Green, which is another one of my favourite colours. It's super granulating, this one, and colour separating. It's kind of a very dramatic colour, but still very earthy. So I love that combination. The next one is a KW Arts Creations colour and it's Moss. I could have chosen so many of her colours, but I really like this incredibly dark earthy green. So this one had to make it into the top 30. A Gallows Harbour Blue is just another one of those colours that I can't get enough of. So it's obviously dark, granulating, it's like a blue green. I really like using it in a wash and yeah, I'd like to experiment a bit more with this colour because I've really enjoyed it when I've used it in the past. And finally, we have Deep Deep Lights Blueberry. This is kind of like a Payne's Grey, but a little bit different. It reminds me a little bit of the Wallace Seymour Payne's Grey, but it's kind of slightly paler than that. But yeah, a really lovely violet leaning bluey grey. If you're still here with me at the end, thank you so much for allowing me to share my 30 favourite watercolours with you. I hope that you found something here that you love and I would love to hear from you in the comments section below. Let me know which of these colours are your favourites and also let me know 
what is your current favorite watercolor? Which one are you really particularly enjoying at the moment? You never know, I might discover some new ones too. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do and click the little bell icon. That way you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. All of this helps me out on YouTube. It lets YouTube know that you enjoy my channel and it helps my channel to grow. So thank you. So I'll say goodbye for now. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you soon in another video.